to move. Oh, I hope I never move again. <laughs> it's traumatic. <coughs> All the things, things. Thank you, James Graham. You're my best friend <sighs> for helping me unpack. Well, so I got so behind in everything, I decided to take my laundry to a laundromat and do the washing fold, they call it. It was just, there was mountains, mountains of laundry. So I pick it up and I thought, this is a great system, it's all done. So I bring it home and I'm starting to take things out one piece at a time, you know. I said, this is wonderful, every single thing, the socks match. <laughs> so anyway, so this morning I go in to get today's things to wear. And I open the new plastic bag, there's about seven plastic bags filled with folded clothes. And I reach in and I pull out this. <laughs> Day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord 
shall be saved. So we ask God's blessing on the reading of the word. Thanks be to God. Pentecost. The sermon name is Pentecost, capital C O S T. Do you hear what I hear? No, it's not Christmas yet. But do you hear what I hear? There was a young mother and she was washing the dishes and she's looking at her kitchen window. She's watching her two young children play in the backyard. And in the midst of them is a water puddle. And they're just playing in the water puddle and splashing and all. And all of a sudden she watches her older son take the younger son's head and push it down into the water and holds him there. She lifts him back up. He lifts him back up. And she runs out to the older son and says, Son, what are you doing? And the older son says, I'm just playing church, Mommy. He says, I was baptizing them in the name of the Father and in the Son and in, and in the Holy Ghost. In the Holy Ghost. Oh. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but today, though, we're reflecting on the Holy Ghost. We're reflecting on the Holy Spirit. The breath, the wind, the flame, the passion, the essence and the presence of the divine all around us and it lives and works through us. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, rain down. Walking out, 
the scriptures are filled with drama. The wind, the breath of God. That same type of drama that God expressed at Pentecost, God certainly knows how to get a message across, doesn't He? Definitely. And I love it. It just didn't happen at Pentecost. We can go back to the book of Exodus. I love this passage. Exodus chapter 19, verses 16 through 19. On the morning of the third day, there was thunder and lightning, as well as a thick cloud on the mountain and a blast of a trumpet so loud that all people who were in the camp, they trembled. Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God. They took their stand at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because the Lord had descended upon it in fire. The smoke went up like the smoke of a kiln while the whole mountain shook violently. And as the blast of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses would speak and God would answer him in thunder. Drama. Wasn't it? God speaks loudly. There's no way to misinterpret that. God's dramatic. God calls us quite often to uneasy or places that we may feel or they might appear uncomfortable, doesn't He? But God trusts us. And God expects us to trust in Him at times when we might feel most removed from Him too. Or just maybe the issue is us. Just maybe we're the culprit. Just maybe we try to handle things on our own and in our, in our own way, though. And it's a pattern that we repeat time and time and time again. God shows us the way we live, the way we experience, we see the result. But six weeks later, we start the process all over again. God is patient. We try to handle things our own way, but then we experience when we finally turn it over to God, a tremendous shift. I love the description of the Holy Spirit found in the Gospel of John. John chapter 14, verse 26 says, Jesus says, The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything, and it will remind you of all that I've said to you. The Advocate. An Advocate. I mean, then we have a lot of people in the hospital and the people of the staff of the hospital. Who's your advocate? What's an advocate? It's a friend. An advocate is a person who makes decisions for you that you trust everything with. Your personal advocate. So Jesus tells us, I'm going to send the advocate, the Holy Spirit, our teacher. One who looks out for our best interest. One who guides us. One who loves us. And one in whom we trust. The power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does and will rain down upon us and continue to do so. But when I read these scriptures last week and meditated on them, and as you can see even through our altar team and everybody, the message of fire and wind kept coming through. And I thought about it. I thought about fire and wind. But fire and wind has two sides, doesn't it? Fire and wind has a destructive side. And fire and wind has a loving side. There's two sides. When I served the church in Pensacola, it was clear to see the remnants still in the fear of hurricanes. Because every time a storm would come through and the dark clouds would go in, you could feel the anxiousness in the air. You could feel the fear. Because they remember Hurricane Katrina and the devastation that that storm brought into their land. Devastation. I saw pictures. People were out of their homes, out of food and supplies and all for weeks. And it would remind them of that same fear. When I served in Kansas, every time the tornado siren went off, people scattered because there's a tornado in the area. We need to take shelter, the wind, the strong winds, the dust, the vital winds that are going to come through. And then there's fire. And I always watch on the television news out west when a fire happens, it spreads so quickly and it destroys acres and acres of land. It takes away people's homes and their foundations. Changes their lifestyle. 
to them life forever. It kills animals and wildlife animals. So why fire? We're talking destruction. And in the Old Testament, you know, we hear about fire and brimstone and how damaging that is. And it, it, the destroyer, fire and wind is the destroyer of life. Fire and wind both can be so destructive.
the intent of this book, which I was holding up, can be found in John chapter 14, verse 27. Jesus informs us that the Father will send the advocate in his name. And what I love mostly is that the book provides us a choice. This book invites us into a decision for the faith. It was interesting in preparing our worship team meeting weeks ahead, and as we're talking, they, this, the worship team looked at the sermon title for this week, and David Dunlap says, Pentecost, and cost is in capital C-O-S-T. Did you hear what I hear? And last question he said, what does that mean? And I said, I don't know. I said, but I'm sure that the Holy Spirit will provide the message this week, and she did. As I'm reflecting and meditating on the message, Pentecost, cost, and I thought about the sacrifice that Jesus made for each one of us, what it cost Him. Pentecost. And the message that came clearly to define the meaning of that title was Jesus gave His life so that we could choose life. Jesus gave his life so that we can make the choice to choose life through the message we right here. Some of my friends, you know, who are not believers and all they like to teach me like, well, you worship a God that you can't, you know, if I could see God, you know, I would believe you, but I can't see God. And when you can produce that, I'll believe. They said, you believe in this imaginary God. Imaginary. And when they say that, I always reply to them. I said, are you breathing? And they go, yes. I said, can you see the air that you breathe? They go, no. But does it exist? Yes. And I said, but I don't even need that. I said, I see God exist all around me. Every day. So many times throughout the day. And every single day. Yesterday, many people from our church got together and I walked into Barbara West Hospital room and there were like 12 people. And through that, I see the presence of the Holy Spirit. Through the post office, our post office on Oakland Park Boulevard yesterday, I went to, to help at the very end and watched volunteers, a dozen volunteers who had been there for hours. It was the postal day to collect food and the post office truck brought them all back in the food. It reminded me of the loaves and fishes. There was a sea of food, plastic bags, all filled with all kinds of food, as far as you could see. And there were our volunteers. They're separating them and boxing them up and lifting and sorting and all that. And that was the only church there that I saw. Which made me sad. And our volunteers here from Roost Ministry, they're helping to feed people in yet another and a different way. It was loaves and fishes all over again. Just a sea of food that had multiplied because so many people in our community wanted to give. It was the presence of the Holy Spirit yet again. And then Sunday or Friday night, one of our Congregants took me to a event. It's called Diversity Honors, and there we had there was oh my goodness 500 people in the room, and they had guest speakers. And one of my favorite speakers, there was a lady that her name was Selena Jack Jackley, and she comes from India. She's Indian. Beautiful. Oh my heavens! Just incredibly beautiful person. Just stunning. And they flew her here from India. She comes up to the podium in her accent, which is so gorgeous and beautiful. And she said, I lived and grew up in a life of privilege. And you could tell the way she was dressed and all sorts of things about her. She says, I'm living a very privileged lifestyle. And all of a sudden one day the divine comes to me and says, you're supposed to be an advocate for the LGBT people in India. She said, me? Why? I have no reason to be that. I have no personal connection to 
to that condition to be. The only thing I know is that people get killed often because of that. But why me? Why do you want me to be your advocate? And she said yes to it. It changed her life. It changed her life. Now she's known around the world for her advocacy work. And when they gave her her award, she held it in her hand. She said, this isn't for me. She said, I dedicate this. And she named two names of two young men who were killed just days before because of their sexual orientation in India. She said, I dedicate this award to them and their courage and what they did is standing up for who they are. She said, they're the advocates. So Jesus said, I will send you an advocate from my Father. The Pentecost experience, interpretation means everything. And even the Christian community, how we see the finding attendance in church and all these things and participation and all. And it's not because I believe about necessarily what we believe, but it's how we treat each other. Of beliefs. It's a war. Conservatives and liberals and the intensity. Who would want to be a part of that? But that day at Pentecost, they could hear one another. That invitation is open to all of us. So Pentecost, do you hear what I hear? And when I think about the Pentecost story, I think about how God has touched my life. And I invite you this week to think about how God has touched your life. And even when the wind and the fire brings challenges in our lives. Think back where you can actually see where God was during those times. Very prevalent. And in the midst of our joys, God is always there also. So in the midst of wind and fire, how has God touched and continues to touch our lives? But we've turned this book into rocket science. We really had scholars and all the people needed how to interpret what's right and what's wrong and all this is a weapon. We turn it into rocket science, but it's not. The message is clear, the examples are throughout these pages. Let us continue to live the way that Jesus lived. Let us continue to love unconditionally. Let us continue to feed his sheep. Let us continue to spread the gospel of the good news. Let us continue to pray as Jesus prayed. Let us continue to be inspired by Jesus' life, Jesus' death, Jesus' resurrection, and Jesus' will and Jesus' way. That's not difficult. And it is a choice. Let's not get caught up in the interpretation. Let us hear the message here. Let us be inspired and led by the advocate to live in Jesus' way. Amen.
touched today by God's love and grace while viewing our worship service, and we hope to see you in person one day. We at the United Church of Christ, Fort Lauderdale, are an open and affirming church that believes in equality for all. We have many ministries that reach out to the needs of those in our community, and there's always something here for everyone to be involved in. We believe that God is still speaking and that our ministry outreach can only continue its vital mission in bringing people to Christ through the support of people just like you. Please visit our website, uccftl.org, for more information about us, to submit a prayer request, or even donate to the church if you have been moved by the Spirit. You will help us in God's work in our ministry outreach. We look forward to hearing from you soon, and we hope to see you next week. May God's peace and love be with each and every one of you. And remember, God is still speaking.